Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about tabs and how do you go about create, creating that for the design system. So we're going to be creating maybe two or three different types of tabs. So without further ado, let's just get started. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and yeah. So the first thing that we need to do obviously is we need to create the base structure of the tab itself. So let's just go ahead and create like this is going to be our tab. And so now that we have that done, let's just make sure the font is fine. Let's probably just use the font in our uh, styling that we've created. So maybe something like this, or maybe it can actually be semi-bold. So let's just keep it semi-bold. Uh, create a frame around it just so we can see how it looks. So here we have the tab. And the first tab that we're going to be creating is going to be a contained one. In the contained tab, we're going to give a fill that's going to be very light um, and we can choose a gray color for that. So maybe something like this probably is fine. This is going to be the disabled state for the tab. Uh, the border radius we're going to be using can be four and the spacing on the left and the right can be 16. So eight by 16 um, and we can have a tab like this. Obviously, the, since the tab is inactive, the color of the tab should also be slightly lighter. Uh, this is a bit too light. This looks disabled. So we'll just go ahead and make it slightly darker, maybe N200 or the 300 makes sense. So we've used 30 for the background and 300 for the text. So this looks fine. I'm going to create a component here. This is going to be our tab uh, base structure. And let's just probably have, okay, let's just create a tab slash contained. And I'm going to basically show what I'm uh, or explain a bit more as to what I'm doing here. So here we have the base, not necessarily the base structure, since these aren't really going to be as complex as buttons. We don't really need a base structure. But if we want to, we can still go ahead and do that. Uh, let me think if we should. Well, maybe we should. So I'm just going to say this is going to be the tab base structure. And we're going to add an underscore. So obviously the underscore remains. And this is going to be our single type of tab. Then we're going to have another tab, which is going to be something like, which is going to have the border. So we usually have tabs which have a border at the bottom. So we're going to have a border at the bottom here. And we're just going to go ahead and reuse some of the same styling here. I'm just going to create an auto layout here. And Let's just go ahead and remove or probably just add this tab here as well. So we have the tab, we have the border at the bottom. One important thing here, however, is the 8 and 16 would still be here, but it would actually be applied on the text that inside, not here. So I'm just going to remove the zero from here. I'm going to remove the background and I'm also going to remove the spacing in between the text and the line. So here we have the spacing in between the text and the line removed and I'm going to make fill the container off the line. So here we have another style of a tab. So here we have these two styles and maybe we can just get started with that. Obviously, if you want to create, let's say, different sizes for these tabs, you can do so. But to just keep this video a bit small, we are going to go ahead and go with this. So this is going to be our title container. I just want to go ahead and like rename things so they're obvious. And this is going to be the title for the tab. And this is also going to be the title for the tab. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy uh, the same naming here. This is not going to be contained. This is going to be bordered. So this is the border bottom. And we can also change that to border bottom. So these are the different styles and I'm going to combine them as variants. Now, it, really important here, this is the base structure of the tab. These aren't really the tabs to begin with. These are the base structures that are going to be used. And we're going to go ahead and rename this to style. Uh, or type. This is the different type and I forgot to include this here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy just something from here. I'm going to drag it here. So obviously everything is organized. So here we have our tabs and then we're going to keep our tabs. I'm also going to make this an auto layout and just have it side by side. So 40 and then by 40. So what I'm basically doing here is and maybe we can just reduce it to 24 by 24. I made it an auto layout, so obviously it's placed correctly. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and start creating our actual tabs. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say this is going to be a tab slash contained or container. We have used, sorry, we've used the name contained here, so we can go ahead and use the same name. Even if you don't use the same name, it's perfectly fine. It's no big deal. 
so now that we have that, this is going to be our tab. I also want to go ahead and create another variant for this. This is going to be our, uh, yeah, this is tab slash contained slash, I think that's fine. So let's just go ahead and create another variant here. This is going to be the active. So we're going to basically say on, this is going to be off and let's just go ahead and style this one. So for the background, if it's active, we actually need the primary color. So we're going to choose primary 30. So, or, or maybe a primary lighter color, maybe something like 75, no, maybe even 50 would probably make sense here. So 50 is fine, yet for the, the actual color, we're going to use maybe something like P300. So this is the active state of the tabs on and off. And there we have it. I'm going to add another property here. And this property is going to define the different types of tabs. So I'm going to say type. This first one is contained. Let's just go ahead and move it at the top. This is the active state, whether the tab is active or not. So here we have these two. I'm just going to go here directly. And I am going to basically just paste this. I am, instead of let's say just pasting this, I'm just going to go ahead, first of all, paste it here. I'm going to give it, uh, a, give a, con uh, a component around it. And the naming convention here is tab slash active or tab slash on. So let's just go ahead and like cut it. I'm going to paste it here. So here we have our, this is going to be the on or off state. And let's just change this. Sorry, the active is going to be off. The type is going to be border, border bottom. So now we have, this is going to be the active off state. I'm just going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to say this, this is going to be the on state. In the on state, the only difference that we want to have is we want to have the border that's obviously colored. So let's just have the border colored. I'm going to go here. Uh, so one important thing here is I did not give uh, a color to this border. So let's just go ahead and give this. So maybe a neutral 30, a really light border should be fine here. So I think that's fine. And then for this one, let's just go ahead and change the border to primary 300 and also change this color to primary 300. So here we have the tabs created. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these tabs out. I'm going to move this one out. Well, I don't I didn't necessarily need it to move that one out, but I'm just going to create multiple tabs within it. So press have spacing zero. I'm going to make this inactive and then we have our tabs for this one. So this is going to be let's just go ahead and rename this first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then maybe sixth. So let's just have these six tabs here. Let's just go ahead and create a component around it as well. This is going to be these are this is going to be our tabs component. So if we want to use these tabs, we just basically go ahead and drag this component. We're going to start using it. If you want to hide, let's say a few, we can hide them. If you want to show them, we can show them. So this is the tab component and we're going to add another variant. This is also going to be the type, the different type, which is going to be, let's say contained. The previous one was border bottom and let's just name that to type and i'm going to go here i'm going to press enter this is going to select all of the tabs that i have and i'm just going to change this uh, border bottom to contained and now here we have another variant of the tabs which actually has this sort of a structure but in this structure we want some spacing in between the tabs i'm also going to make this an auto layout so we can all see the tabs and yeah so this is going to be our second type of tab and one thing that we have to do here, which is really important is I don't like this color. I don't, I think the background is really dark, especially when we have a, a bunch of tabs in front of us. So let's just make it slightly lighter. Maybe something like this makes more sense. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, let's just go ahead and align things a bit. So here we have the base structure. Here we have the tab component. Let's just base tabs. This is the tab component. And then we have another one. This is going to be the tabs component. And the reason why I've separated them is just in case a person wants to free flow them, he wants to grab certain tabs and let's say make multiples of them, then he can. But for the most part, these tabs components are going to be the one that are going to be used. Um, now we have to add a few other things. We have to add state. 
So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say state. This is these two are the default state. Um, and let's just go ahead and actually add some states here. Let's just go ahead and move these tabs component a bit below. So this is the act, this is the default state. This is the on state. But now we have to create a hover state for especially for the default one. And maybe we can do one for the active one as well, but especially for the default one. So I'm just going to drag it here. This is the state for this is going to be hover. And let's just change the background to be slightly darker on hover. So maybe something like this is fine. This was 20. This is OK. That's fine. And similarly for here, let's just go ahead and change that to hover. And in this case, maybe the border and even the text gets slightly darker. So in this case, the border can be slightly dark like this and the text can be slightly darker like this. It's going to be very subtle, um, but it should be sufficient. And now let's just go ahead and also link them. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say while hovering, this should change to this. And while hovering, this should change to this. Let's just see how that looks visually when we're hovering over things, just to make sure everything's looking good. So if we hover over these things, as you can see, it's it definitely is prominent. So I think this probably looks good, I think. There's also one other variant that I want to create for the tabs is sometimes you actually have pages where you have, let's say, uh, two tabs that are actually just spanning across the complete width, uh, especially that happens, like especially in these bordered ones. So I'm just going to duplicate it. This is going to be border bottom expanded, maybe. Um, and in this case, what we want to do is I'm going to press enter and I'm going to basically change all of this to fill container. And now if you see, these are fill containered. Um, but one thing is that these aren't really resizing. So we have to make sure that these should resize. And in order to make certain of that, I'm going to press enter fill container and press enter again. And I'm going to fill these container as well. Now, one thing that we have to obviously improve here on all of these, I guess. So I'm going to select, I'm going to select the container, press enter, and then, or maybe just obviously go here, press enter make sure this is centered this text is centered so now as you can see this is centered so now anywhere we basically try to use this component imagine if we're here we're going to use it we just want to use two tabs here or three tabs as you can see they're going to expand completely and you can have first tab content here and then you can have the second tab content and stuff along those lines and this is going to expand accordingly if you want to make it slightly wider it's going to become wider if you want to if you don't want to make it wide you can just keep it small um, if we obviously go and make it contained, it's going to go back to its original size. If we also want to create like an expanded variant for this, for this one, we can also do that. So, or maybe let's just go ahead and do that immediately. So, so we're consistent instead, instead of this border bottom expanded, let's just make it border bottom and create a new property for the expanded. So I'm going to say expanded and I'm going to have that off by default. In this case, it is going to be on. So I'm going to change that to on. And let's just go ahead and duplicate this and say that in this case, we're going to have it contained. Sorry, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to say this is going to be on. And in this case, I'm going to again go and press and basically make it fill container. And now if we actually make it wide, as you can see, it's not really becoming wide. So I'm just going to go and press enter again. And I'm going to make sure that these are also wide here. So now we have the same sort of a pattern here. I'm going to go here. As you can see, if I wanted to just keep three, these are going to expand completely. If I want to change them to border bottom, these are going to convert to border bottom. And this is the contained variant. And this all looks good. Now, one benefit of creating the component is in the base variant is now we can actually do some changes that I think I missed initially. So as you can see, if I go here, the height for this is 33. The height for this is 34. I ideally want to follow a four pixel grid. So I think the height should actually be something like 36. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to make this 35. So the whole thing is 36. Similarly, I'm going to go here and I'm going to manually give it a height of 36. And now our uh, tabs are actually should all all of them should be 36 because we've used the base structure and similarly here all of these should be 36 as well so I think that's pretty much it let me see let me think if I can remember any other type of a variant we can also obviously go ahead and slightly reduce the sizing the spacing in between these tabs here 
if we want to. Um, but I think that pretty much should be sufficient for the different types of tabs you want to create. If you obviously want to create a different type, dif a different size for these tabs, you can do that too. And you can just go ahead and actually duplicate all of these if you want, or you can create the sizing here. Ideally, I would recommend creating the sizing here as that would be much easier to replace everywhere. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.